president? Me? Why not? I'll be your campaign manager. But I could never be school president. Think of the work. Think of the responsibility. Think of the power. I'll do it! Here, sign your name on this line. When we get to school, we'll take this into the principal's office, and you will then be officially entered in the race for school president. Good, we're on our way. I hope I won't be expected to do something right away about teachers' salaries. Why are you crying? I don't know. I was jumping rope. Everything was all right when... I don't know. Suddenly it all seemed so futile. Boy, this auditorium is packed with teachers and kids. Shh! Schroeder is starting his nomination speech for you. I am here this morning to nominate for the office of school president a great young man. But first, I'd like to say a few words about Beethoven. Oh, good grief! I accept the nomination for the office of school president. If I'm elected, I'll do away with cap and gown kindergarten graduations and sixth grade dance parties. In my administration, children will be children and adults will be adults. I may even do away with stupid elections like this. Thank you. I've been taking a private poll of the voters. I don't believe in polls. The way I see it, you have the backlash vote, the front lash vote, the whiplash vote, the eyelash vote, and the tongue lash vote. This would give you 73% and your opponents 22%, with only 5% undecided. I believe in polls. I'm a reporter for our school paper, Linus. Would you care to tell us what you intend to do if you are elected school president? I intend to straighten things out. We are in the midst of a moral decline. We are... I'll just put down that you're very honored and will do your best if elected. The press is against me. Hey, you! Who are you going to vote for? Well, you better! According to my private poll, you now have 85% of the vote. That private poll worries me. Charlie Brown for my vice president. Oh, good grief! Well, what's wrong with him? I think he'd make a good vice president. Maybe you're right. He might even help us win the election. He'll probably bring in the wishy-washy vote. If I'm elected school president, I will purge the kingdom. My administration will release us from our spiritual Babylon. My administration will bring down the false idols in high places. I wonder why the principal looks so pale. If I am elected school president, I will demand immediate improvements. I will demand across the board wage increases for custodians, teachers, and all administrative personnel. And any little dog who happens to wander on the playground will not be chased away but will be welcomed with open arms. If I'm elected school president, my first act will be to appear before the school board. Hmm, I'm sorry. I will not be able to appear before the school board. They meet at 8 o'clock, and I go to bed at 7.30. The way I see it, We've got this election cold. 
My personal poll now shows you leading with 92% of the vote. To your opponents, 7%. 1% is still undecided. Undecided? It's depressing when you think that somewhere in the school there are students who still can't decide to vote for a nice guy like me. I'm a photographer for a school paper, Linus. As long as you're running for school president, we'd like a picture of you. In order to make it look sort of homey, I thought we'd pose you with a dog. I've changed my mind. Mr. Chairman, teachers, and fellow students, this will be my last speech before our election. We've got it cold, Charlie Brown. If he doesn't say anything stupid, we can't lose. Just think, I'll be vice president. I want to talk to you this morning about the great pumpkin. Ugh! Halloween will soon be with us. On Halloween night, the great pumpkin rises out of the pumpkin patch and brings toys to all the good little children. <laughs> A bony election. All right, say it. Go ahead and say it. I know you want to say it. I talked too much and I blew the election. So go ahead and say it. Just go right ahead and say it. Oh, you blockhead. She said it. But why did you have to bring up the great pumpkin? It was my duty, Charlie Brown. Halloween will be here in a week, and everyone should be told about the great pumpkin. Oh, good grief. You're looking at me like I'm crazy. I'm looking at you like I could have been vice president. Let him hit it. <laughs> What's wrong, Charlie Brown? You're slowing down. My arm hurts. Already? This is only the first game of the season. Your arm can't hurt already. Forget about your arm. The only thing that matters is winning. Win, 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 win. He can't keep pitching. His arm hurts. Forget about the pain, Charlie Brown. Keep throwing those curves. Maybe he has bursitis. How about a shot of cortisone? Forget about the pain. Pitch through your tears. He can't pitch if his arm hurts. You'd better go home, Charlie Brown. I said forget about the pain. Learn to overcome adversity. Go see the doctor, Charlie Brown. Tell him to give you a little cortisone. He should have pitched through his tears. Well, I found out what's wrong with my arm. I've got Little Leaguer's elbow. You've got what? Little Leaguer's elbow. It's caused by trying to pitch too hard without being properly warmed up. The x-rays reveal separation and fragmentation of the epiphysis of the right medial epicondyle and loss of facial markings about the elbow suggesting hematoma. I think that the doctor was just trying to tell you in a nice way that you are a lousy pitcher. Okay, Linus, you're going to have to do the pitching for a while. Now, I don't want you to get Little Leaguer's elbow, too. So warm up slowly. Just throw smooth and easy. And absolutely no curveballs. What will I do with my blanket? I'll hold it for you. You're a good manager, Charlie Brown. Linus struck out the side. Boy, we should have had you pitching for us a long time ago. Now maybe we can start winning a few games. Oh, 
Hi there. Yes, sir, what a difference. We should have had you pitching for us years ago. You don't have any sympathy, do you? I pitched my arm into a sling for this team of ours, and all you can do is make sarcastic remarks. I'm sorry, Charlie Brown. Do you want me to kiss it? Get out of here! I know who can get hurt watching clouds. Then the wolf became very angry, and he huffed, and he puffed, and he blew the house in. That's ridiculous. No animal could huff and puff that hard. <laughs> Have you ever read The Three Little Pigs? I've never been so happy in all my life. I feel like a great burden has been lifted from my shoulders. What shoulders? Wouldn't it be fun to go on a camping trip? And get bitten by a queen snake? Not your life. Those queen snakes crawl right into your tent and chomp you. The woods are full of them this time of year. Stay out of the woods. Those queen snakes don't care what they do to you. Stay out of the woods. That's my model. You prefer to remain in the city then, is that right? In the middle of the sidewalk. Guess what, Snoopy? Mom said I could pitch a tent in the backyard and sleep outside tonight. Tomorrow is the 4th of July. It's also Independence Day. Did you know that? No, I didn't. This is one of those years when they both fall on the same day. Happy Independence Day. Thank you. What does independent mean? It means being free from influence or control of others. What does your kind think of that? even to get it for supper, eh? Well, you know what I'm going to do? Just to show you I'm a good guy, I'm going to fix it so that you can eat without getting up. doctor? No, my mother isn't home. Oh, yes. My arm feels much better. Does this mean I'm over my little leaguer's elbow? Good. What's that? 
The other x-ray? The other x-ray you took shows I got... I got what? He says that I have eraser aphasia. It's caused by nibbling on erasers. Why can't you just get the mumps like other kids? get it. I have eraser aphasia. That means I have little bits of eraser in my stomach. So I'm an eraser nibbler. Why should I be punished for it? Can't I ever get away with anything? Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. I can't stand it. Bad news, Snoopy. We're all out of dog food. I've taken the liberty of bringing you some cat food instead. Dear Pencil Pal, how have you been? Don't chew on that eraser! How in the world am I going to break myself of the habit of nibbling on erasers? Use a pencil that doesn't have an eraser. That's what I do. How can you do your schoolwork without an eraser? Are you insinuating that I'm the kind who makes mistakes? Looks like an ordinary stomach, doesn't it? Well, it isn't. That stomach is filled with erasers. Get out of here! Hellbeam is almost here. I've told everyone about your coming. Forgive me if I sound blunt, but if you don't show up this year, you've had it. I'll hold the ball and you kick it. Oh, brother. I don't mind your dishonesty half as much as I mind your opinion of me. You must think I'm really stupid. I know you don't trust me, Charlie Brown. You think that I'm going to pull this football away when you come running up to kick it. Well, here's a signed document testifying that I promise not to do it. It is signed. It's a signed document. I guess if you have a signed document in your possession, you can't go wrong. This year, I'm really going to kick that football. <laughs> Peculiar thing about this document it was never notarized. Getting the old pumpkin patch ready, huh? Yes, sir, boy. Each year, the great pumpkin rises out of the pumpkin patch, which he regards as the most sincere. Do you think this pumpkin patch looks sincere? Oh, yes, it looks very sincere. Well, it didn't look insincere. that you weren't safe sitting there. How humiliating. How do you feel about what Linus is doing? 
Doesn't it bother you to know that one of your friends is going to spend Halloween night sitting in a pumpkin patch waiting for the great pumpkin? It doesn't bother me because it doesn't affect me. Horrors! What do you want me to do? Get involved? But he's your brother, isn't he? That blockhead! He's sitting out there in that pumpkin patch right now. That blockhead! He'll end up sitting there all night waiting for the great pumpkin. Aren't you concerned? He's going to sit there all night and nobody cares. That blockhead! Dear Great Pumpkin. Well, I waited and you didn't show up. It's a good thing that I'm young and can stand all these disappointments. Frankly, I've had it. The ones I feel sorry for are the older people who waited all night in their pumpkin patches for you to come. If I sound bitter, it's because I am. Sincerely, Linus Van Pelt. P.S. See you next year. Thank you. The rain stopped, Charlie Brown. What did you do? Call the weatherman? No, dial a prayer. You and that stupid blanket. If I were your mother, I'd snatch it away from you and throw it in the trash burner. The tactics of extremism. Sure. Look what I found. Here's a brand new shirt that you've never worn. You got this for your birthday over a year ago. Why haven't you worn it? It was too much trouble taking all the pins out. down for days. Everything's flooded and good grief! Snoopy! You can't go out in this rain! I've got to. Snoopy's out there stranded on top of his doghouse. He needs help. Wait! Don't bother. <laughs> I'll check to see if the water hurt any of your things, Snoopy. I don't think there was too much damage. The TV still works. Everything seems okay. Oh, and here's good news for you. Your Van Gogh wasn't harmed a bit.
We don't want any little kids taking after us. Go on home. You heard us. Go on home. We don't like little kids. Stop following us. Yeah, stop following us, little kids. Actually, I'm bigger than any of them. What they're referring to is my emotional immaturity. To whom it may concern, I am writing in regard to good days. I want three hundred and sixty-five of them. If you want good days, it's best to order them a year at a time. There, I've just sent in my order for three hundred and sixty-five good days. By good, of course, I mean good for me. That's great. She's just preempted the whole year. You mope around too much, Charlie Brown. You've got to stop feeling sorry for yourself. Why shouldn't I feel sorry for myself? I'm very tender-hearted. Stop looking so bored all the time. Life isn't that bad. The least you can do is look interested. You know what your trouble is, Charlie Brown? The whole trouble with you is that you don't understand the meaning of life. Do you understand the meaning of life? We're not talking about me. We're talking about you. You know you don't do me any good at all. As a dog, you're supposed to be my pal. You're supposed to console me when I'm feeling low. All right, I'm feeling low. Console me. Dear Agnes, I like your advice column in the paper. I feel that I could use some of your advice myself. I don't know, however, exactly what it is I want to ask you. Just send me some advice. You know what you and Snoopy should do? You should go to an obedience school. Not again! I always feel so silly. Every night it's the same thing. He won't go to bed until he gets a horsey back ride. Next batter, here's what I want you to do. The situation calls for a bunt. Now, they know we know the situation, but we know they know we know. But it just may be that they know we know they know we know. So, start over. What happened to your arm? It's out of the sling. Oh yes, when a person has little leaguer's elbow. His arm is in a sling for only a short period of time. Don't tell me you're ready to pitch again. Oh no, not for a while yet. Wow, you really had me worried there for a minute. I feel guilty, Charlie Brown. I don't want to be a pitching here at your expense. If you hadn't got Little Leaguer's elbow, I wouldn't even be pitching. That's all right. The only thing that matters is the team. The team is everything. Of course. If you want to feel just a little bit guilty, go right ahead. How's your arm, Trolley Brown? Oh, it feels better, thank you. I think it's getting better every day. Do you realize we haven't lost a game since you had to stop pitching? Yes, I realize that. How's your arm, Trolley Brown? Hey, manager, we have a problem. I'm used to that. We're 
we're missing second base today, so I thought we could use Snoopy's dish. I guess that'll do all right for practice. <laughs> this is going to be one of those days when we get nothing but singles. Are you going to play today, Charlie Brown? No, my arm isn't quite ready yet. I thought I might stand by, though. I just might go in as a pinch hitter. Not for me, you won't! Then again, maybe I'll just stand by. I've called you together today to let you know that my arm is better. In fact, I think I'm ready to start pitching again and... That's what's known as turning in your equipment. All right, if my team doesn't want me to pitch anymore, I'll play third base. The worst that can happen here is you may get... a few line drives now and then. Next guy's a good hitter, Linus, so you better play deep. Throw it in! Throw it in! The runner's trying to score from third! How's your arm these days, Charlie Brown? It feels fine, thank you. I read where one doctor said that human arms are not made for pitching baseballs. What are they made for? Hugging. I wonder what he's going to pitch to this next hitter. Probably a curveball. Psst. Charlie Brown, we outfielders have been wondering what you're going to pitch to this guy. A curveball. Really? You were right! He's going to throw him the curveball! Casey Stingle doesn't have half the problems I have. Charlie Brown said I could pitch for one inning. Okay, let's get our signal straight then. One finger will mean a fastball, two fingers a curve, and three fingers a slow ball. You know what? You're kind of cute. Is Lucy going to pitch again? If she is, I quit. You know what she did? She's always calling for conferences on the mound. I go out there, see? And you know what she does? She kisses me on the nose! I don't think you musicians know what love is. All you ever think about is your stupid music. All you think about is your music and yourselves. You don't care anything about other people. You don't care about love or tenderness or... That's what is known as a spectacular catch of a routine fly ball. Ah! A spider! There's a spider on the ball. We can't pick up the ball, Charlie Brown. There's a spider on it. It will be interesting to see if the official score gives the hitter credit for a home run. I can't understand why you don't like me. I have nice hair, a very pleasant smile, a cheerful personality, a kind face, and a heart full of love. If you add up all my features, I think you'd get a pretty attractive answer. Maybe you added wrong. It's good to be back on the mound again. The sun is shining, and my arm feels great. Everything is just like it was in the good old days. Unfortunately.
Dear Santa Claus, how have you been? Please don't get the idea that I'm writing because I want something. Nothing could be further from the truth. I want nothing. If you want to skip our house this year, go right ahead. I won't be offended. Really, I won't. Spend your time elsewhere. Don't bother with me. I really mean it. What in the world kind of letter is this? I'm hoping that you'll find my attitude peculiarly refreshing. Gulliver's Travels, Part One, Chapter One. My father had a small estate in Nottinghamshire. Good grief! This book has 254 pages. I'll start reading it tomorrow. Frozen water dish. Good grief! I just remembered something. We're supposed to read Gulliver's Travels during Christmas vacation and write a report on it. Have you started yet? Started? I did mine right away, so I wouldn't have to worry about it during the vacation. I hate your kind. Charlie Brown, come on in. Look at all this stuff: a bicycle, games, clothes, baseball equipment, more clothes, more toys, candy, books, a transistor radio. This is terrible. This is my worst Christmas yet. How will I ever develop any character? I always get everything. I shouldn't be outside playing like this. I should be inside, reading Gulliver's Travels and writing a book report. It's good for you to be outside, though. You need the fresh air. You're right. I do. Good old wishy-washy Charlie Brown. Are you ready for the party, Linus? Yes. I'm just combing my hair. I'm soaking it down with lots of water. I'm afraid, though, of what will happen when I get out in the sunshine. Ludwig von Beethoven. Did you know that the von and Ludwig von Beethoven didn't mean anything? Nothing ever disturbs you, does it? Teacher, a birthday card. Maybe it will take her mind off the fact that I didn't get my math done. How do you think of things like that? I'm always interested in anything that will cloud the issue. Dogs are stupid. How in the world is he going to remember where he buried that bone? Don't worry about him. I've been meditating.
meditating. I don't think it helped you. You don't look any different. I'm new at it. You think you're happy just because you're happy all the time. Well, happiness isn't being happy all the time. Happiness is being sad too. If you're sad sometimes, then you're happy all the time. And don't you forget it! I'm a lousy meditator. I always fall asleep. Puzzle me. You really do. You're a real puzzle. I try to be nice to you. I try to say nice things. I try to be the sort of person I think you probably like. But you don't react. You don't do anything. You don't say anything. I talk to you and you don't even answer. Sometimes I get the feeling that you don't even know I exist. He likes me! of nature. There's a real lesson to be learned from this. Do you know what it is? Don't be a leaf. Be a tree. All right, I'll tell him, but he's not gonna like it. The best thing to do is get it over as quickly as possible. It's wash day! Oh no, I'll never make it. Hang on, it's halfway through the first cycle. It's in the rinse cycle. Hold on, it's in the dryer. Here it is. Safe through the miracle of modern laundering. We're going to have a science fair at school. I'd sure like to win a ribbon. I've got to come up with some kind of project that will be so original and so different that I'll be certain to win. All the other kids will have rocks and bugs and batteries and mice and seeds and all that stuff. I've got to think of something completely different. That's it! I'm going to be what? You're going to be my science project. I'm going to enter you in our school science fair. I'm going to make a series of tests with you and that stupid blanket to see why it brings you security. Suddenly I feel very insecure. You took my blanket away! Of course! This is the first test. I'm going to record your reactions. Ten seconds. Indication of fear. Thirty seconds. Symptoms of panic. Forty-two seconds. Subject began to perspire. Eyes appear glazed. 50 seconds. Subject passed out. Blanket taken from subject. Subject loses consciousness due to loss of security. Blanket restored to subject. Subject recovers. What a science project! You really puzzle me. What sort of person are you who would enter her own brother in a science fair? I won, didn't I? That's always been a problem with me. I've never known how to argue with success. 
you to come over and eat lunch with her. April Fool! Why don't I go over and talk to that little red-haired girl? I can't. I just can't. I hate myself for not having enough nerve to talk to her. Well, that isn't exactly true. I hate myself for a lot of other reasons, too. And she'll be here this afternoon. Oh, no. I'm always glad to see her, but... Oh, no. Today? Good grief. I'm doomed. My blanket-hating grandma is coming to visit us today. She'll want to take away my blanket. She's against kids carrying blankets. She knows all my tricks. She knows all my hiding places. I can't keep fooling her forever. I can't keep... I've got it! What did you do? I mailed it out in a self-addressed envelope. It won't come back until she's gone. This is it, Charlie Brown. Last half of the night. Base is loaded, two out, and I'm up. Oh boy, I'm going to murder that ball. I've never felt so confident. Look over there. That little redhead girl is watching you. Maybe I shouldn't have told him. She's here. That little red-haired girl is watching the game, and she's going to see me make a fool out of myself in the last inning. I've got to show her. I've got to get a hit and win the game. I've got to. I've got to. Good grief. Why did she have to show up just when I'm on the spot? Well, I'll just have to show her how good I am. I'll just have to clobber one right over the old... <clears throat> Two strikes. That's okay. It only takes one to hit it. And I'm going to hit it too because that little red-haired girl is watching me, and I'm gonna be a hero. Did she call me? I thought I heard her call my name. Dear Pencil Pal, well, I made a fool out of myself again. I struck out with the bases loaded and lost the ball game. A little red-haired girl, whom I admire very much, was watching me. Could you tell me how to get to where you live? I'm thinking of leaving the country. My blanket. Too much. Do you really think so? Snoopy, I have a surprise for you. Some of your friends have agreed to get together and give your house a real good cleaning. We'll be starting tomorrow. I just thought you'd like to know. No one wants to turn my jump rope for me. They all say I'm too crabby. They say I complain too much, they say I complain when they turn it too fast, and they say I complain when they turn it too slow. No one understands us crabby people. Linus, do you think I'm a very crabby person? Stand right there. 
Don't move. Yes, I think you're a very crappy person. Got it rolled up? Okay, bring it out. Good work. We're sending the carpet out to be cleaned. Charlie Brown, I want to ask you something. Do you think I'm a crabby person? Yes, I think you're a very crabby person. Well, who cares what you think? Maybe I am too crabby. Maybe I should try to be nicer to people. I suppose I could if I really tried. Oh, how I hate to give the rest of the world that satisfaction. I'm on a new campaign to be nice to people. While I'm at it, I suppose I might as well include dogs. Here's a nice pet on the head. Ever be a success, Charlie Brown? I wasn't aware that it had already been established that I'll never be a success. Oh yes, everybody knows that. I'm always the last to hear about these things. You'll never be able to change. You'll always be a crabby little girl. You were born crabby, and you're gonna stay crabby. Don't think you're gonna change because you're not. Suddenly, I feel a great sense of relief. Rabies, an infectious virus disease of the central nervous system in dogs. You shouldn't be fussing about getting that shot. You should be grateful. Well, if you're not grateful, you should be. That's better. By this time, you'd think they'd know better. Mom says for you guys to get down from that tree right now! Stupid kids! She says, what are you trying to do, break your necks? That means you, too! We're a couple of sore arm buddies. Did you ever think of that? You had a rabies shot, and I've got Little Leaguer's elbow. That's kind of funny, isn't it? I guess it isn't. Hey, get up! Aren't you going to school? I don't think so. I got a pain. Tell Mom I think my stomach is broken. I'm sorry about the rabies shot, but it's the law, you know. to come empty your waste basket. It doesn't need emptying. She says it does. It doesn't need emptying, I tell you. She says to come empty it anyway. Mothers are so fussy. I had to see this for myself. Mom said you were emptying the waste baskets and she had to only ask you twice. She said that's like the average person doing it without being asked at all. I have a very sarcastic mother. You bought Snoopy a present? Well, getting that rabies shot was quite an upsetting experience for him. So, I thought a present might cheer him up. Besides, it's something he's always wanted. Uh, 
anxiety for me and asked him how long I'd have to stay in jail if I punched a beagle in the nose. Listen to this. It says here that nothing pleases a mother more on Mother's Day than to receive a long distance call from one of her children. That's a good thought. Hello? Mom? don't want to know. Leave me alone. The whole trouble with you is you won't listen to what the whole trouble with you is. You don't need me to point out your faults, Charlie Brown. It's for your own good. Besides, I can do it for you better than anyone else. My system is unique. What's so unique about it? I have put all your faults on slides so we can project them on a screen. Oh, good grief. Those dog food commercials don't come on too often. Da -de -dum, de -da -de -dum. Okay, turn out the lights. Now, this afternoon, Charlie Brown, we're going to be looking at slides which deal with your many personality faults. Some of them are quite shocking. Take this one, for instance. Ah! Easy, easy. This is only the beginning. What's wrong with you? Other dogs jump up and down when their masters come home from school. That's the most sarcastic jumping up and down I've ever seen. What an experience. Lucy is showing me slides of all my faults. What are you doing sitting out here? Intermission. What we're viewing today, Charlie Brown, are slides of your inherited faults. In other words, these are faults over which you had no real control. These take about an hour to show. If it's any consolation to you, you rank about average in inherited faults. I stand consoled. going to get down to business, Charlie Brown. These slides show your biggest and most damaging faults. Ah! Turn it off! I can't stand it any longer. I can't stand it! I've never gone through anything like that in my life. I never knew I had so many faults. I've never felt so completely miserable. Wait until you get my bill. like a bill. Don't tell me. Lucy Van Pelt, for services rendered. $143! Did you send me this bill for $143? Yes, this is my bill. You're upset, aren't you? Well, I can understand why receiving such a bill would upset you. I should have itemized it. It cost me $10 to rent the slide projector. 
It cost me another $33 to have the slides made up. That totals $43. The $100 is for my personal fee. So all in all, you owe me $143. And I still have the same faults. I helped you a lot. I pointed out all your faults. I proved to you that psychiatry is an exact science. An exact science? Yes. You owe me exactly $143. If you were a physician and one of your patients refused to pay his bill, what would you do? Well, I don't know. Maybe you could threaten to beat him up. I wonder if that would be ethical. To the AMA. Gentlemen, I have a question. I sometimes feel like I'm... Five cents? Huh, that's a laugh. What did he mean by that? Don't pay any attention to him. Go on with your problem. a good queen. Switch channels! I said switch channels! I want to watch my program! Are you kidding? What makes you think you can just walk right in here and take over? These five fingers, individually, they're nothing. But when I curl them together like this into a single unit, they form a weapon that is terrible to behold. Why can't you guys get organized like that? You're not a good brother at all. You're not a good brother because you don't work at it. If you're going to be a good brother, you've got to work at it and work at it. Where's the practice tea? If you only knew how nauseated I get every time I see you holding that stupid blanket. Why don't you take a pill? Why don't you take a pill for relief of nausea caused by sight of little brother clutching blanket? I guess somebody's getting hungry. Perhaps I could be a better brother to you if you tell me what a good brother should be like. All right, I'd be glad to. A good brother should be kind and considerate. The welfare of his sister or sisters should always be one of his chief concerns. He should be honest, thrifty, and sincere. And trusting, and faithful, and courageous, good and bold, grief. and patient, and generous, What's this? A dish of ice cream. I brought it to you in order that your stay here on Earth might be more pleasant. Well, thank you. You're a good brother. Happiness is a compliment from your sister. Okay, switch channels. Oh no, not again! I never get to watch what I want to watch! Never, 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 never! I hope your program gets a lousy rating.
red haired girl is sure cute. I'd give anything in the world to be sitting there next to her eating lunch. Blah! Nothing takes the taste out of peanut butter like unrequited love. What's this? It's a project for school. We're supposed to draw someone in a family. I notice you haven't put in the mouth yet. Well, uh, there is no real hurry. It doesn't have to be finished today. In fact, I was just thinking of quitting. Put in the mouth. I want to watch you. It's wrong to rush a work of art. I think I'll just wait. Put in the mouth. It's hard to draw well when your hand is shaking. Wouldn't it be great if that little red-haired girl gave me a valentine tomorrow? What if she came over to me and handed me a big, fancy valentine with lace all around the edge? What if she said to me, Dearest Charlie Brown, won't you be my valentine? Please? 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 I'd better go in. I think I'm cracking up. There's that little red-haired girl. She's handing out valentines. She's handing them out to all her friends. She's handing them out one by one. She's handing them out. She's still handing them out. Now she's all done. That was the last one. Now she's walking away. Happy Valentine's Day. You know why that little red-haired girl never notices me? Because I'm nothing. When she looks over here, there's nothing to see. How can she see someone who's nothing? You're depressed, aren't you? If I were you, Charlie Brown, I'd forget that little red-haired girl. You're not her kind. Whose kind am I? Now that's a good question. Yes, sir. That's a very good question. Boy, you sure got me there. Whose kind are you? Wow, that's a real stickler. That's a puzzler if I ever heard one. Yes, sir. That's a rough one. Oh, good That's grief. a poser. That's a... Do you think patience is a virtue? Oh, yes. And I'm proud to say that it is a virtue which I possess. You really would consider patience as being a virtue then? I said so, didn't I? If you're thinking of asking me if I got a lot of Valentines, the answer is no. Did you hear me? No. That means I didn't get any. None. Not one. The answer is no. Not a single solitary one. None, none, none. I wasn't going to ask you. 